Hello everyone, welcome back, and instead of jumping back into the fray with game development, I'm going to jump back into the fray with hair. Hair is a real nightmare. Um, anyone who's made a 3D game can attest to that. Right now there are two common ways of making hair. One of those ways is to use a frond by frond, vertex by vertex, painstaking craft, um, and you end up with this low poly hair that looks like anime. And that's actually not a bad way to do it if you've got a lot of patience. The other way is to use particles that sprout from the head, but uh, that's not very suitable for game development because the results can't really be turned into a mesh. Um, and if you try, the mesh ends up looking like a helmet. So I'm going to show you a third way that not very many people use, um, but I like it. This is a MakeHuman model. MakeHuman is like Poser, except for it's open source and free, and about five years behind. Um, the reason that I'm using Make human instead of poser is because I don't need the uh, overhead that comes with accidentally showing any kind of copyrighted content on YouTube. Um, so this is open source content and I'm allowed to show it. What we need to do is we need to create a skull cap and any time that you've got a tutorial on how to do hair, you're going to have excuse me, you're going to have a tutorial on how to do skull caps. You need to every single variety requires you to do a skull cap. So. I'm just going to grab some stuff, and it's okay if it's chunky because our method does not require us to have a perfect skull cap. So hit Shift D to duplicate that stuff, and then P to split it away, and then Tab to find it. And instead of calling it generic 01, let's call it hair. So this is our hair, um, and what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and create uh, a kind of long haired. Uh, guy with the hair sort of covering his eyes a little bit. So I'm going to leave this area intact. Um, and what I, instead, of, instead of instead of going up to here, where is where you'd no, which is what you'd normally do with skull caps, but we still need to expand it. So that's what I'm going to do. Expand it just a little bit, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into sculpt mode. Now, sculpt mode is probably something that most people are unfamiliar with or have only tried in passing. And even if you are familiar with it, you maybe haven't tried it for hair before. But there is a reason people don't use sculpt mode for hair. My tutorial is about how you can use sculpt mode for hair anyway, and a step at the end will let you turn it in to good hair. Um, so if you've done this before and you've, you know exactly how to build hair using sculpt mode and it looks nasty, skip to the end of this video. If you've never done it before, I'll show you how to build hair with sculpt mode. So the first thing that we've got is we've got this snake brush. The snake hook brush is, is going to be the basis of everything we do. But what you can see is that we have, we've pulled out this, this chunk here, but it doesn't have any density to it. It's super stretched out. And, uh, and that's not going to work for us. We need to have a much more, um, we need to have the hair gain density wherever we put fronds. Fortunately, Blender now enables uh, Blender now has an enable dynamic function. So now, if we were to grab hair and stretch it out, you can see that it creates as many verts as it needs instead of uh, being stuck. Now, when I'm recording, this doesn't react very well, so there's going to be a lot of missed clicks. But when you're doing it, you probably won't have nearly as much of a problem. Um, there is one core key to being able to sculpt like this, and that is understanding how to maneuver the camera, because the brushes always move across the face of the camera. And that means that if your camera is in the wrong spot, you'll be dragging through the head. So for example, that's not what we want. So you've got to really get used to maneuvering the camera around. If you're using a tablet, bind the middle click button to one of your tablet buttons, or one of your keyboard buttons that happens to be near wherever your hand is resting. Um, otherwise you have to keep switching to the mouse and that's real pain pain in the butt. Uh, and if you have a key if you have a tablet, binding the size change function is also useful. So what we use a snake hook brush for is creating the basic topology that we need. So we're going to just go ahead and drag out the pieces that we would like. And uh, we never want to drag inside of the head, so Whenever that happens, you know that your camera is at the wrong angle and you should adjust it. Now we're using a pretty big snake hook brush at this point, so um, oh, I screwed that up. So uh, we don't want to try and go for any of the fine details. We are just trying to do the most basic uh, fundamental details. And you can see that I've put a little bit inside, so I'm going to drag that out. There we go. Now the snake hook brush won't create 
topology every single time you use it. It'll only create topology um, when the brush drags the system far enough. So you can do small adjustments and not worry about it. But honestly, you shouldn't have to worry about topology anyway. Uh, the, the technique we're going to be using at the end um, will get rid of all of the complexity that you've accidentally added. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and craft the back. And this guy's got kind of a, a not quite ponytail going. Come on. Now, don't worry that it looks a little unnatural. We're going to be dealing with that in a few minutes here. So on this side of the head, we're going to go ahead and tuck behind the ear. So grab out, whoop, and you can see that I've gone inside of the skull, which means that my camera angle is not quite right. Oh, we're still inside the skull. Um, there we go, that should do it. Yeah, there we go. And so we're going to tuck the hair behind the ear by using a snake brush around the ear, like that. And then you can adjust it. And now this is the part where everyone who has done this before uh, cries foul, because this area here is really obnoxious. You can see that it's super high density. We've got a ton of verts there. Uh, if we press tab, for example, um, you can see how high high density that is, and that's something that you never want to actually have. Uh, but we're going to deal with that later. Now, if you do press Tab, you're going to have to re-enable a dynamic topology because it goes away every time you exit that mode. A kind of a pain in the ass. All right, so we've got the basic structure now, and what we're going to do is we're going to really shrink down this brush, and we're going to add in some of the more detail. Uh, areas. So, for example, we want to have this and uh, here. Now, if you're not recording, this is much easier. When you are recording, it's a real pain in the ass because your mouse doesn't react very quickly. Sorry if I'm a little quiet here. I'm kind of trying to remember to get the keep the camera just right. Also be a little bit careful of fall through. Um, if you click here, for example, you're going to grab stuff on the other side of the head. So if you don't see anything change, but you're pretty sure you clicked, it's probably going to be a situation where you've clicked on something on the wrong side of the skull, because the back face culling does not apply to sculpting. Um, it'll grab from the back just as easily as anything else. All right, so now we're here at the back. Oh, let's go ahead and add in a little bit more detail up here, like this. Now, both of those were bad. I need a little bit of a larger brush than that. There we go. Come on. This is not the best camera angle to try this particular tactic in. Yeah, that didn't work out. Just keep adjusting the camera angle. And now here you can see some of these fronds have gotten very pointy. Don't worry about it. That'll work out in the end. So in this area, we don't have anything being tucked behind the ear uh, in terms of large fronds, but we could use some small fronds tucked behind the ear to accentuate the fact that there is an ear. So let's go ahead and do that. There we are. There we go. Now these fronds in the back uh, kind of stick out funny, so we're going to use the grab brush to change them. The grab brush is great because it doesn't change the topology even if 
you have uh, d dynamic d topology enabled, which means that you can freely manipulate these without worrying about an exploding vertex count, um, although the exploding vertex count isn't an issue in this case anyway, as you'll see at the end of the episode. So really the three brushes you're going to be using are uh, the snake brush and the grab brush. And the grab brush can basically take the larger snake brush things and push them into place and they look like hair now instead of like large flat um, you know, pieces of plastic. It can also deal with these smaller ones which gives you a nice kinked hair look uh, so you don't have to worry too much about it always being straight or whatever. You can give them whatever kind of look you want. Of course, this guy has a pretty flat top of his head, so we could also go ahead and uh, give him a little bit of something. Oh, you can see that I've accidentally pulled some hair into the forehead, so just find a good angle and drag it back out. So let's go ahead and give this guy a little bit of uh, stuff on top of his head just to give it um, some kind of, of uh, depth to it. So let's turn on the snake hook, get a nice big snake hook, and let's go ahead and just give him a frond that comes... Oop, frond that comes out like this. Okay, that's too big of a snake hook, I guess. Alright, something like that. And this will, in turn, go down around the ear, just like the first one did. Like so. And now, if you think that that looks really terrible, that's because it does. But, there's a lot of things you can do to fix any kind of terrible stuff. So you want to have the fronds, make the frond that you, make the big structural pieces of hair that you need exist, and then you can adjust them uh, however you need to in order to make it work in the long run. Oh, and you can see that the delay on the mouse caused an error there, that's okay. Uh, so these get tucked behind the ear just like the lower group, and we'll drag this down so that it looks like it's properly uh, dangling, like so. And then we'll switch back to the snake hook brush and finish this off so that it doesn't suddenly end in a weird spot. Oh, this is much too large. There we go. Oh, come on. Doing this while recording is actually very difficult because the mouse doesn't react right. All right. And now just look at it from a couple different angles to make sure that it looks okay. And you can see that it doesn't, so let's switch back over to the grab brush. And move all this stuff in. Yes, that's exactly what I want you to do, mouse. This is really hard when the mouse clicks can't be relied on. And you can see that we are pushing certain other parts of the hair into the skull, but that's okay because it's actually fairly easy to fix that by shrinking the brush down and pulling them back out, which I will do as soon as I'm done with this wayward piece here. Remember that the grab brush does not create new verts, so you can grab and it'll remain the same. All right, so there we go. And we can also give him, uh, oh, a little bit too aggressive there, I think. Just adjust it until it looks right. Now, um, uh, there are a lot of other things we can do. For example, if we wanted to give him more of an anime frond sort of thing, you can just do that. That's much too large a brush, though. Uh, that didn't work. There. Now he's got a little anime frond. All right, so the last brush that I might go ahead and show you is the smooth brush. The smooth brush is something that a lot of people have tried to use in sculpting and then had it bite them in the tail, and that's because it doesn't do what you might think it does. Uh, for example, if I were to use the smooth brush down here, it would actually make this frond just go away. Uh, it should. 
there see like that and that's not what you want to have happen the only place you can use the smooth brush is on areas where you actually want less detail uh, so that means uh, here would be a good place to do it except I think I actually have to use a grab brush there um, but also this place here happens to have a lot of extra detail now it doesn't actually matter because we're going to be get doing something to get rid of that detail in the long run anyway so you don't have to do this the only way the only reason you should ever do this is if you need to see what's going on and you can't really tell um, so if you've got a lot of complexity in an area so much that you can't really tell what's going on then you're obviously going to want to do something with it to smooth it down let's go ahead and finish off the basic hair structure though and to do that we need to add to the back but we also need to pull up this little point here so that it doesn't dip into his skull I'm presuming that there's not actually a hole in the mesh there from our snake drag. Interesting. It looks like there might actually be a hole in the mesh there. Well, whatever. I'm not sure what happened there, but um, you know, if that happens to you, watch out for it. We can always repair it in the last uh, last step if we need to. So let's go ahead and add in the tiny fronds that we need in order to have the back of the head look correct. And that's just a matter of shrinking this down to a smaller brush size and then just sculpting out some fronds. Now don't worry if they're too skinny for your um, uh, planned haircut because uh, they will be expanded on in the final step. But if they are so skinny that you that you can't stand it, you can always just go for a larger brush size, which is what I've just done. And uh, normally I would spend a lot of time on this step, but because my mouse is not responsive at all right now, um, it would be a kind of a waste of time. Um, and plus there are people who presumably don't want to be bored out of their skull, so uh, I'll probably just do a little bit of work here. And, uh, and leave it at wherever it happens to end up with. Um, but I do want to go ahead and grab this brush, uh, use the grab brush to bring this front in, in under control here. It's a little bit excessive. Come on. There you go. Like that. Now if you want things to look realistic, you can use the grab brush to, to uh, you know, kind of push around any of the pieces that look a little bit unnatural, and they will naturally kink up in a very, uh, you know, hair like way so you know play around with that and remember to always look from multiple angles and so if it gets uh, you know far too far away from the neck or whatever you can just bring it in oh, that was the mouse malfunctioning just make it look however you'd like and the last thing we need to do is I added this big frond here just to show you that it could be done, but I didn't add in any of the detail work that is required to make it not suck. So <sighs> Recording. This is so much easier when I'm not recording. And now it's going to go crazy, isn't it? Oh, it did. That's good. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and add in. I guess that's camera angle's wrong. Gotta watch out for that. Here we go. And you can see that that front is a little bit out of control, so you can bring it into control using the grab, just like you did before. You did that. I did it. Whatever. And you can see the basic workflow. Now you can spend hours doing this, but even if you spend hours doing it, it's going to take it's going to take you less time than doing it pixel by pixel or vertex by vertex. So this is our basic hair structure, and we can play around with it all we'd like, um, but we are going to want to finish it off here just for tutorial's sake. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the last step. And that was the sound of me putting away my tablet. So the last step is to go back into object mode and uh, you need to add in the decimate modifier. Here it is. And you can bring the ratio right down to something like 0.1 or 0.08. Oh, not 0.0 though. That's a little too low. And now this really depends on what you need 
your vertex count to be, but you just keep your eye on how it looks. And you can see that the really, really small fronds have become significantly more noticeable. Um, and the really, really d dense, complicated areas are much less dense and complicated. But if you wanted to take a look, here is the hair as it is when it's undecimated. And it's got 15,400 verts, which is a lot for hair. Um, that is, in fact, as much as many character models themselves. But uh, if we were to decimate that, we could bring it down, and this is an order of magnitude less, so that would take it down to 1,500 rather than 15,000. And uh, to show you that, I can actually just hit Apply and go into the hair, and you can see that it is, in fact, down to 1,580, which is a much more reasonable amount. Um, and you can do whatever you want here. Obviously, your texture and your uh, bump map are going to be of major concern here because you're going to need to... Uh, uh, add in a lot of the detail work because this is not a high poly hair, it's a kind of moderate poly hair. Uh, but that's something that you should be able to handle. Uh, even if you're not very good at bitmaps, you should be able to handle it. What I normally do when I import it into something like Unity is I use smooth, uh, I, I'd use smooth normals and then I rely heavily on the bump map to provide me with more definition. Um, you can see that we've got a little bit of clip in here uh, and a couple of other details that we would go back and we would revert to the undecimated model and fix it up in, in uh, uh, either either back in um, uh, either back in sculpt mode or in vertex edit mode. Um, but I don't really feel like doing that. Fortunately for us, you can in fact modify it right here in this mode. But it is a little bit difficult to, to see very well because it is still fairly high poly, even if it's less high poly than it was. So, um, you know, you just have to figure out where the vertexes are, verts, vertices, and just drag them out. Uh, this method does produce um, a kind of complex combination. Uh, it, it doesn't connect up in all of the ways you might think it should. Uh, so, for example, there is a vertex here that I can barely see. Um, here it is. And you can, so you get a lot of complicated topology that you didn't really expect. But that always happens when you're doing sculpting. So it's up to you how you want to deal with that and if you care. Uh, and there's a lot of other places where we can do additional work in, in getting rid of more complexity. We don't need all of this complexity here, for example. So you can dissolve away these edges. Um, just, you know, find wherever the, wherever the complexity seems too high and then dissolve them away. Uh, and that'll get you get rid of all of the really nasty areas. If you ever get the error cannot dissolve, just try some other verts. Um, and you will eventually find uh, that you have uh, uh, created a frond that is less aggressively, annoyingly high density. And those are the secrets. Um, this is how you do hair in, uh, in a fast way. And it all comes down to using the decimate function and then destroying any of the incredibly high areas remaining. Um, uh, you can try limited dissolve too, I suppose, if you really wanted to try out some various things. There we are. All right, so that's it, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, that's a quick way to do hair.